Olá, estamos de volta recebendo mais um grande nome, uma referência internacional nesse programa de internacionalização da UDC, o Centro Universitário UDC. E hoje recebendo o professor PHD Alan Kassab, da UCF, da Universidade Central da Flórida, nos Estados Unidos. Ele que participou do Congresso de Engenharia Mecânica. Professor, é um grande prazer. Welcome in Foz do Iguaçu, in UDC, in Brazil. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to be here, and I've uh, very much enjoyed the visit. Eu queria, antes de mais nada, perguntar é, sobre a palestra que o senhor é, ministrou, é, sobre o tema que foi é, apresentado aos alunos aqui da UDC. Well, I uh, had the opportunity to talk to uh, an audience of students and faculty uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, research that we've uh, undertaken at the University of Central Florida in the bioengineering area and in particular uh, cardiovascular problems that we've uh, been investigating in partnership with uh, physicians uh, and surgeons with whom we've been uh, involved in research uh, in the realm of uh, congenital heart disease um, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, aid that engineers can provide uh, in, in suggesting alternatives to treatment planning for patients that um, are afflicted with such diseases. Um, so we, we looked at um, uh, uh, circulation uh, called uh, the Fontaine circulation, which is the final stage uh, of three reconstructive surgeries and some issues that arise there and uh, demonstrated some applications of engineering uh, at the interface of medicine and engineering. And so the students were very much engaged. I was uh, very pleased with uh, Uh, the audience, I was very pleased with the back and forth and, and uh, the good questions that the students had at the end of the, at the, end of the lecture. Deixa eu perguntar porque é, a gente, um congresso de engenharia mecânica, com as suas pesquisas voltadas à questão da saúde, é, doenças do coração. Né? É, é cada vez mais importante essa necessidade de entender um pouco de cada área justamente para resolver esses problemas? Well, it's uh, very critical to be able to address uh, these multidisciplinary problems, as I mentioned in, in my lecture. Um, we are not only applying mechanical engineering principles uh, to uh, bioengineering problems, but also electrical engineering. Uh, we're involving computer science. Uh, we're involving also physiology, which um, We're, we're benefiting from uh, a close partnership with the physicians, with our physician partners. And so um, I'm trying to impress upon this, uh, the audience the necessity not only to um, understand one's field, but also to be able to understand and, and uh, assimilate uh, concepts from uh, other fields, in, in particular in these, kinds of, uh, in these kinds of problems. And I also mentioned that even within mechanical engineering, Uh, one has a tendency to uh, focus on, on one particular discipline. So, for example, you know, fluid mechanics and heat transfer and really not do a lot of mechanics. But in, in bioengineering applications, all of these come into play. So we're interested in fluids, we're interested in solids, we're interested in uh, highly nonlinear uh, responses. Uh, there's a lot of computer uh, uh, programming and a, a lot of uh, computational techniques that, in, that are involved in tackling these problems and, and arriving at solutions that are germane and important for the medical realm. And these are interesting problems that have been brought to us by our, our physician partners. So there's, there's a medical question that is posed to us. 
and it is our job to assemble all of these uh, techniques and all of this multidisciplinary team to work on a problem. And it's a, it's a large team of students and faculty um, that uh, you know, are, are able uh, to work as a, as a, as a group and complement each other's capabilities in order to tackle a very challenging problems. So, so the research group not only involves faculty uh, and graduate students at the master's, PhD level, as well as at undergraduate level, but we also engage medical students uh, to work with us and to, um, um, you know, bring in some of their uh, expertise as well, as well as our uh, physician partners who work very closely with us and actually attend our research meetings, uh, whether at, at the university and sometimes we uh, go to the hospital and, and hold our meetings at the hospital. So um, we benefit greatly from very close collaboration with, uh, with the physicians and the, and the medical school at UCF. Eu ia perguntar justamente essa questão da, da importância da participação do acadêmico, do estudante. É, e o senhor até falou alguma coisa em relação a isso. Que importância tem a pesquisa científica, é, a participação do aluno é, dentro desse processo de construção de soluções de problemas da sociedade? Well, it, it is critical. Uh, it is absolutely critical because the, the students are carrying out much of the work. We are guiding them. Uh, we are, you know, re re reviewing, um, you know, their progress. Uh, we are also training them to go out and, um, you know, continue this kind of work um, in, in their practice in, 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 the, in the future. And I can give an example. Uh, one of my uh, last PhD students, uh, Ray Prather, who's not Dr. Ray Prather, uh, has actually um, taken up a post at uh, Arnold Palmer Hospital and is embedded at the hospital working with physicians. And so he is there, um, you know, solving real, uh, real world problems and, and finding opportunities for engineering uh, solutions to, uh, uh, to issues that arise uh, daily at, at the hospital. And so Ray uh, is uh, continuing the work and is, uh, you know, spearheading uh, our, our collaboration and uh, bridging the university and, and uh, Arnold Palmer. Que mensagem o senhor deixa para os alunos aqui da UDC nesse sentido, principalmente quando a gente fala é, em interdisciplinaridade? Ou seja, é, a necessidade de, de, de se entender um pouquinho de cada coisa, que eu acho que o senhor também comentou alguma coisa nesse sentido é, na sua palestra. Well, as I, as I mentioned to the students last night, um, you know, not only, uh, you know, excel at your particular field, but always keep an eye open uh, for interesting problems and interesting uh, ideas that you'll find in other fields. And um, you, you should, you should uh, not just be good at what you do, but also excel in, in uh, for example, if you're a mechanical engineer, you, you should be able to handle electrical engineering, you should be able to handle uh, some computer science, uh, you should be able to pick up when confronted with a problem such as the ones that we're seeing here, uh, new concepts in, in, uh, uh, in medicine, uh, physiology, anatomy, and, and such. So I, I've seen our students um, really blossom. I mean, they're mechanical engineering students that are getting training on the, on the, on the fly. Uh, we do have a master's degree in, in bioengineering at, at our uh, institution, which does provide uh, a good level of training for these students and uh, we're working on a PhD in bioengineering so that uh, those that are inclined will uh, have an avenue to get further formal training. But uh, I, I think we live in a multidisciplinary world. You know, when I started my career in engineering, uh, you were a heat transfer person, you were a solid mechanics person, you were a solid, you were, you were uh, an electrical uh, engineer and uh, you, you really didn't, um, you know, kind of play in, in another realm. But nowadays, this is, uh, th this is no longer the case. And, um, you know, it, it is uh, absolutely important because the problems that we're confronted with are, are multidisciplinary. And, um, you know, you, 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 even within your discipline, <laughs> you know, these walls are, are breaking down and, um, you know, one is, is required to be able to be uh, somewhat of a jack of all trades and, and it's important uh, to have this capability and, and, and the interest to do so. And it's important to understand each, each other's language. Um, you know, so, so we, we 
uh, need to understand the language uh, in, in the medical world and the medical uh, partners need to understand our language. And I've been very fortunate actually with uh, the, uh, my, my collaborator in the sense that he's had some training, uh, some very serious training in, in physics. Uh, he, has, he also holds a PhD in physics as well as an MD. So that's facilitated a lot of uh, you know, our collaboration at, at that level. A importância, a importância de, um, de, um, de uma parceria entre instituições, no caso, o DC e o CF. É, o que isso representa, até onde essa parceria pode chegar, é, com bases que vêm se fortalecendo cada vez mais? Well, I mean, it is always important to uh, have relations uh, with other institutions. Uh, this is always an enriching experience to um, uh, understand uh, each other's um, uh, realm. Uh, I think we've had a pretty good exchange of faculty uh, from UCF uh, that have uh, come to UDC and, and presented and uh, participated in some of your congresses. Um, and I, you know, we live not only in a multidisciplinary world but in an international world. You know, the, the, the world has become flat as uh, somebody said in, in one of their books. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing uh, for us to collaborate and uh, to continue to do so. O senhor gosta de engenharia. É, isso tem a ver muito também com energia. É, o senhor sentiu bastante energia nas cataratas de Iguaçu? I felt a lot of energy at Iguaçu Falls. It was uh, really wonderful. It's, it's just a, a, a really great personal experience to have, uh, to have seen these falls. And uh, I have a great guide that took me everywhere and showed me Uh, every every aspect of the falls and um, really explained uh, you know the local history here and uh, not only did I see the falls but I also saw the uh, the dam at uh, Itaipu and uh, that was very impressive uh, it's just a, a great feat of engineering and it's a it's a testament to Brazil to have such a, uh, a facility that provides 20% of the energy uh, electrical needs of the country just through hydroelectric uh, power. So uh, I think this is a this is a great example for the world to see. And here's an example of uh, collaboration, right? Paraguay and Brazil working together and uh, you know creating this great feat of engineering and uh, not only having accomplished this but to continue to have a working relationship. I understand Paraguay sells back some energy to Brazil which it doesn't use, and so uh, that I think you, you've got a great example right there in front of you uh, where, you know, partnerships and uh, uh, international relations are, are uh, working in a, in a very symbiotic manner. É, para a gente encerrar, que mensagem o senhor deixa para os alunos, para os estudantes que estão hoje é, começando uma vida acadêmica é, com relação à busca pela pesquisa, à busca pela informação, e o que isso representa para a sociedade, para o futuro da, da, da sociedade, para o futuro dos brasileiros, do mundial, enfim. A importância dessas pesquisas para quem está começando uma vida acadêmica. Well, academic research is, is very important for students' training and, and for, for students' uh, growth. Uh, it, it is a, it is a uh, formative experience. Uh, it also allows students to um, draw upon all of the theoretical training that they have had and to implement this in a challenging project. Um, I, I found, for example, when I was a master's student that my master's thesis, beyond the courses that I've had uh, at the time, was really something that I benefited from tremendously. Uh, you have a sense of independence, you have a sense of ownership, and uh, you, you become a, a, a mini expert if you do this right. Uh, in, a, in the topic that you're engaged in in terms of research. And, and our institution um, also promotes uh, undergraduate research. And so we are also in the, in not only training students at the graduate level, but we're also training students at the undergraduate level, many of whom continue into graduate school. So at all levels, uh, I think, you know, uh, getting students engaged in research is a, is a you know, worthy activity. Eu queria agradecer demais a sua presença. Já existe alguma expectativa de volta ao Brasil na UDC? Well, we're always open to uh, future visits. I've, I've uh, always enjoyed coming to Brazil. 
I've never been to the south of Brazil, and this has uh, been a, an eye-opening experience and a very pleasant one. Eu queria agradecer muito a sua presença. Foi uma honra recebê-lo aqui no programa, recebê-lo aqui na UDC, em Foz do Iguaçu. E seja bem-vindo em outras oportunidades. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Muito obrigado. <laughs> E o nosso programa vai encerrando, vai ficando por aqui. Com certeza nós voltamos em outra oportunidade, com outro referencial mundial, com outro professor, doutor, PHD, em outra área e de outras universidades também. É o programa de internacionalização da UDC. Nós voltamos em breve. Até lá!